Listen, if you're having a rough time with thin lenses and spherical mirrors in your physics class, I want you to know two things. Number one, you're not alone. This is honestly one of my least favorite topics in the entire course. But number two, your life is about to get a lot easier because I'm going to give you a couple of really nice cheat sheets that show you how to do these problems in the simplest way possible with the least chance of getting anything wrong. Okay, so let's go over the basics on the next page really fast. And then we'll get to those cheat sheets and try some examples together. Here we go. Thin lens and spherical mirrors. The whole idea here is creating images. So for example, if you got a camera, you're taking a picture of something, right? That thing is your object. Object, and then you got a lens in your camera. What's that going to make? It's going to make an image. It's going to project that image onto a piece of film or a digital sensor or something like that. So a real image created by a camera is an image that can be projected onto a screen. And it's not just cameras, all kinds of other stuff makes real images too. Likewise, a virtual image, what's the difference there? A virtual image is something that can't be projected onto a screen. So for example, your bathroom mirror. If you look in your bathroom mirror, you're gonna see an image of yourself, of course, your eye can see it, but it can't be projected onto a screen. If you took a piece of paper and put it behind your bathroom mirror, Nothing would show up on that paper, okay? There's no way to actually project that image. So that's what a virtual image is. So how do lenses make real and virtual images? Well, first type of lens we're gonna look at is the converging lens. Most of the time we're gonna call it converging, but you might sometimes see it called convex as well. Either way, that's your little football shaped lens looking at it from the side view here, okay? So here's what happens with a converging lens. Some light rays come in from an object and they're going to converge together. They're going to bend toward each other. That's what converging lenses do. When they come toward each other, they're going to meet at a certain point usually. All right. And if they do meet all together at one point, just like that, the image that you get, in this case, it's smaller and upside down, is going to be real. So real images are when all the light rays actually meet up together. Converging lenses usually make real images. Sometimes they can make a virtual image though. Let's see how a virtual image is made with a diverging lens. So a diverging lens, also known as concave. Again, we're usually gonna call them diverging, but in case you see concave, the way I remember that is it looks like a literal cave that the light is going into. Easy enough to remember, okay? What happens here? It makes light rays bend away from each other. So light rays come in and they go in opposite directions away from each other through a diverging lens. That means they can never ever meet up. If they can never meet up, then a diverging lens can only form virtual images because meeting up rays are what form real images, okay? So how do you make an image at all? What you do is you trace back some of those light rays to see where they would meet in a backward direction. And if they meet up all together somewhere, you might get an image at that location, okay? So that's your difference between real and virtual images, converging, diverging lenses. But let's not get too deep into that because we have a nice cheat sheet to show us how to do every single problem without honestly really having to think too much about that stuff at all. So there's a lot of information here, but I swear it's gonna make your life so, so easy, all right? So first thing I wanna point out to you is just the formulas. So these are all the formulas that you can use for thin lenses. These four right here, really nice. So you got focal length, object and image distance. By the way, I use D-O-D-I, object distance, image distance, very easy variables. A lot of professors out there, textbooks, all kinds of resources use different variables. You'll see a whole slew of crazy variables for object and image distance. I just like to use the ones that make sense, but you can feel free to use whichever ones you want. You also got magnification and you got the object and image size and something called power as well. You could be asked to solve for any of these things. When you're using these formulas, there is only one thing that I want you to be absolutely obsessed with and that is the sign convention, okay? So these are my sign conventions right here. There are different ways to do this, but these are by far the easiest sign conventions to follow that will get you the right answer every single time. If you just memorize this set of sign conventions right here for all these variables, it's a little bit to memorize, but if you get it memorized, you will never get one of these questions wrong. Just stay obsessed with your sign convention. So we'll go through lots of examples. The last thing I wanna point out on this cheat sheet that's really useful to you is a way to check your answers, okay? So by comparing your object distance against the focal length, you can make predictions about what types of images will be created. So these are for the converging lens. 
Diverging lenses actually always create the same type of image. So all these boxes are the same as that one right there. You can just copy that straight down if you want to on your cheat sheet. But anyway, these are nice predictions that can allow you to check your answer once you're done with the problem, once you've done the math using the formulas, okay? And sometimes, honestly, for a multiple choice question, if you have these memorized, you can just get the answer instantly without doing any math. So that's another route that you can take if you want to as well. Let's try some examples together. Let's use that cheat sheet. Let's be obsessed with those sign conventions. So example number one, we got a hipster using a vintage camera with just one thin lens to take some pictures for Instagram. To get sharp pictures of a very distant mountain, the lens is 60 millimeters from the film. Of course it's film, he's a hipster. Uh, let's approximate the focal length and power of that lens and determine the type of lens used. All right, cool, so that's a lot. Uh, first thing you wanna do, write down all the variables that they give you, okay? The first thing that I notice is that they say that the mountain, that's our object, is very distant. Whenever possible, write down your object distance. You're usually gonna have that information, not always, but usually. Very distant is secret code in physics. It's saying that the object distance is effectively, it's so far away, we're gonna say it's infinity meters away. Now, when I write down any variable in optics, here's what I do. I leave off the sign, I consult my cheat sheet, I check the sign convention, so for object distance, really easy sign convention, it's always positive, couldn't be any easier than that, okay? And then once I'm 100% positive, I'm sure of the sign, I literally write that sign down to tell myself, I checked the sign, I'm 100% sure that's right. Okay, cool, what else did they give us? Uh, they gave us 60 millimeters from the film. That's where the image is gonna appear, 60 millimeters from the lens to the film. So that's the image distance, 60 millimeters, that's gonna be 0 0.06 meters. And according to our sign convention, because that appears on the opposite side of the lens from the object, right? Mountains on one side of the camera, the image appears on the other side of the lens on the film. That turns out to be a positive image distance. I'm just referencing my sign convention. So we know DODI, we wanna calculate a focal length. That's pretty easy. Let's use the lens maker's equation. That's one over F equals one over DO plus one over DI. We're gonna rearrange that, get F by itself. So we're just flipping both sides. So it's one over DO plus one over DI, all to the negative one power. Plug that into our calculator. We get positive 0 0.06 meters. Now, when the focal length comes out positive, that tells you more information. Go back to your cheat sheet. If your focal length for a lens is positive, you know for a fact you have a converging lens. So we now know that this is a converging lens, which is another one of the questions they ask, what type of lens was used? We also want the power. That's pretty easy, got a formula for that. Power is equal to one over F. All right, so power is equal to, if we type one over that focal length right there into our calculator, we're gonna get a positive number. It's positive 16.7 units for power are one over meters, meters to negative one power, which we also call in optics, we call that a diopter, okay? So diopter or meters to the negative one power, exact same thing. All right, we're good. Now, what if we wanted to check our answer for this problem? Well, we would take a look at our cheat sheet, all right? We got DO at infinity, and that's our focal length right there. Okay, so I would say that DO is greater than two times the focal length, way more than two times the focal length. That means our image should be real, inverted, and shrunken. Let's see if that's true. If we wanted to check our answer here, we should have a real image. Well, how do we tell that? Positive image distance means that we have, let's check it out, image distance. Positive means a real image. That checks out. All right, it's also supposed to be uh, inverted. How do we tell if it's inverted? That comes from the magnification. Magnification equation is negative di over do. If you were to plug in our two di do values in here, you'd get a negative number. Negative magnification means that you have an inverted or an upside down image, which by the way is also real. All of that's checking out for us, okay? It's also supposed to be shrunken. How do you tell that? Well, again, if you plug in for magnification, di over do, you're gonna get a tiny, tiny value here. That means that this image is gonna get shrunk down really, really small. Infinity is just an approximation, so you can't actually calculate the exact magnification in this problem. That's why they didn't ask for it, but it would be a really small number and a small absolute value of magnification means a shrunken image. We went into a lot of detail on this problem. Let's get through some more examples and let's go a little bit quicker through them, okay? So now you know how to do the whole process and how to check your answer using the cheat sheet. Hey, before we do the next example together, take a second and check out my website at crambetter.com if you want me to tutor you for your entire physics course. I'll even give you 10% off when you sign up. 
Just click the link in the video description, use coupon code YouTube, and you'll be acing your exams in no time. Let's do it. We'll go a little faster now. So example number two, we got the focal point of a diverging lens 10 centimeters from its center. What is that telling us? The focal length. For a diverging lens, looking on our cheat sheet, that's always negative. So negative 0.1 meters, I'm just converting to standard units here. It produces an 11 centimeter tall upright image. So that's the image height or image size. And it's upright. If it's upright, sign convention tells us that must be positive uh, 0.11 meters. The object itself is 20 centimeters tall. That's the object height, which is always positive, and it's positive 0.2 meters in this case. Okay, calculate the distance of the image from the lens, state whether the image and object are on the same or opposite sides of the lens. So we got three variables here, want to figure some stuff out. This one's going to be a doozy, okay, we're going to get into it. So here we go. First thing I'm going to do, if I have HIHO, I know for sure I can calculate the magnification using HI over HO. Just divide the image sizes, that tells you how much it's been magnified. Makes sense. So our magnification here is going to come out to a positive number, positive 0 0.55. Magnification does not have any units, it's just a ratio of two things. So now we got magnification. Once you have magnification, it allows you access to another variable here, all right? Uh, because magnification is equal to negative di over dl. If we knew either one of those, we could calculate the other one. We don't quite, but here's what I can do. I can put them in terms of each other. So DO is equal to negative DI divided by the magnification. Now you might be asking, why did I do that? Well, because check it out. I'm gonna combine that equation with another one from our formula sheet. I'm gonna take a look at the lens makers equation. That's the one over F equals one over DO plus one over DI one. And I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say, hey, I know F and I have DO now in terms of DI. So I can make a substitution. This whole thing is equal to DO. I can stick that into my lens maker's equation right there, and everything will be in terms of DI, allowing me to solve for that image distance, which is gonna be really useful for me. Okay, so one over F equals, I'll plug it in one over the DO value. That's just gonna flip uh, what we had there. So it's gonna be minus M over DI right? One over something just flips it upside down. So I'm flipping upside down this thing right here. Uh, plus one over DI. What's that going to equal? One over F equals uh, one minus M on top, and it's all over a common denominator. So one minus M divided by DI, okay? I'm trying to solve uh, for that DI that I don't know. So DI by itself is going to be F times one minus M, I'm going to plug that all into my calculator. I actually have those variables. I'm good to go. If I plug that in, I get negative 0 0.045 meters. And that tells me something really important. If you have all your sign conventions memorized and you look back, image distance negative tells us the image is on the same side of the lens as the object. And by the way, it's also virtual. That was one of the questions they asked us. They said, is it on the same or opposite side? So this thing is on the same side. So that is one of our final answers right there. They asked us for the image distance. That's this number right here. Um, and we want to know uh, nothing else. Actually, we answered all the questions. If you wanted to check that answer and see if everything checks out together, everything's kosher, you could go down to this table right here, find your situation and see if it matches up with all this. I promise you it does. But hey, let's move on to the next page. Let's keep going. All right. So the other way you can make images is with mirrors. Mirrors cut out of a spherical piece of reflective material. They're called spherical mirrors. So you got converging mirrors. Usually we're gonna call them converging, but sometimes they'll call a converging mirror concave. Remember cave means the light's going into something that looks like a cave. Really important for you to notice here, concave mirrors converging, but a convex lens is converging, okay? So don't mix those up. Whenever possible, call them converging and diverging. Everything's a little more consistent if you memorize it that way, okay? Concave, convex, a little bit confusing. I don't like those terms as much, but we gotta deal with them if they're in an exam question, right? Okay, uh, so how do we form an image with this? Well, your converging mirror, just like a converging lens, is usually gonna make a real image where all the light actually crosses at a point. Uh, as you can see, the light rays come in and they come together at this point right here, forming a little upside down penguin for you right there. Fair enough. Not going to get too deep into these ray diagrams, to be honest with you. They're kind of overblown. They're not that important. Let's just keep it going. Keep the concepts coming uh, before we get to the next cheat sheet. So a diverging mirror, again, we're usually going to try to call them diverging. 
Also, you'll sometimes see convex, it's the same thing. It's one of these, right? Like for example, the little mirror uh, that's pasted onto the side view mirror on like a big truck, that's those like bulging out mirrors. That's a convex mirror, a diverging mirror. These are gonna form only virtual images, just like a diverging lens. So diverging mirror is a lot like a diverging lens. You can see how that ha happens here in this uh, diagram if you like, but let's, let's go ahead and get to the good stuff, all right? Let's get to that cheat sheet on the next page for mirrors. Now, this page, you're, I know you're gonna hate me for this. You're like, this is a lot of information. You're giving me a whole nother page of that same amount of information. How am I ever gonna memorize all this stuff? Remember, number one, all you really need to memorize is the sign conventions. And number two, almost everything on this page is identical to the lenses. The only extra thing you get access to with mirrors is get one extra little formula here. It's a very simple way to calculate the radius of curvature of the mirror itself. So just make sure you know that one's a really easy one, not that bad. The other differences here, I'm just gonna point out the differences to you. Remember that in all instances, concave and convex are switched. So that's there and that's here. Converging, diverging still means the same thing, but concave and convex are shifted. So here, all those places are shifted compared to lenses. The other thing I want you to see is that image distance for lenses, it was negative when your image was on the same side um, as the object. For mirrors, that switches. So it's positive for the same side and negative for the opposite side. And uh, yeah, just like with lenses, uh, this little guy right here, it's the same all the way down. And by the way, these are all the exact same uh, values for that table. So nothing else has changed on this page except for the stuff that I've underlined here and just pointed out to you um, at various points. So make sure you know those differences and don't try to re-memorize an entire sheet like it was completely new. It's basically the same stuff. Let's try some examples together. Here we go. Example number three, the manager of a Circle K hangs a reflective metal ball of diameter 60 centimeters from the ceiling of his store so he can keep an eye on shady patrons from all angles. Local middle schooler tries to steal a vape eight meters from the ball. Classic, how much is the middle schooler magnified? Okay, cool, uh, weird question. Let's give that a shot. First thing I notice, it's a metal ball. Is that a mirror? Yeah, it is, it's a reflective surface, that's a mirror. If it's a ball, right, it's kind of poking outward in all directions, that's looking like a convex uh, mirror, right? That's gonna be one of those diverging mirrors. So we know it's diverging, and they gave us a diameter here. Well, if you are given a diameter, you automatically know the radius. The radius is half the diameter, that's 0 0.3 meters for the radius. So that's our first variable here, radius of curvature, 0.3 meters. We're going to be really paranoid about our signs because we always need to be. Double check that. Radius of curvature is a new one. What's the sign convention? Always positive. Couldn't be easier than that. We're just going to put that plus sign confidently there. Next up, uh, we know that the object, that's our uh, shady teenager there, is eight meters from the ball. Object distance is always positive. Uh, that is, whoops, not zero point. That's a full eight meters away from our ball. All right, cool. We know R. We know DO. What else do we know? Not much, that's about all they gave us, all right? So let's start calculating some stuff. First thing I'm gonna start with is this radius of curvature. When they give you radius of curvature, 99% of the time, the only reason they gave you that is so you can figure out the focal length. So go ahead and convert that. So radius of curvature is equal to the absolute value of twice the focal length. Therefore, the focal length is equal to divide the radius of curvature by two, right? So dividing that radius of curvature by two, it's gonna be 0 0.15 meters. Be paranoid about your signs. There were absolute values here. We don't know what the sign of F is gonna be, so we gotta find it out a different way. What's well, a metal ball, right? A ball pokes out in all directions. It's that convex, that diverging mirror, all right? If you look back, your convex or diverging mirror always has a negative focal length. Okay, so we can confidently tack on a negative sign there on the focal length. Moving on with this problem, what are we gonna do next? Well, we got a focal length, we got DO. We can figure out DI if we wanted to. One over F equals one over DO plus one over DI. Solve that for DI. DI is equal to subtract one over DO, take the inverse of both sides. That's gonna be one over F minus one over DO, all to the negative one power. If you're wondering how to type that into your calculator, let's do it together really quick. It's gonna be uh, one over F. So F is negative 0.15. One over that is just raising it to the negative one power. So that's a little shortcut for that. You could type one slash if you wanted to as well. That's fine. Minus one over DO. So like the other way of writing that is one over DO is eight. Close parentheses and raise the whole thing to the negative one power. Here we go. 
we got negative 0 0.147, 0 0.147. So di equals negative 0 0.147 meters. That's our image distance. Uh, what do we actually want to know, though? We want to know magnification. That's the only question they asked us. So how do we figure that out? We got a formula for magnification. So let's stay organized here. Magnification, now that we know di and do, it's negative di over do. That's our formula, pretty simple. Let's plug that into our calculator really quick. So it's negative di, that's uh, negative of a negative is a positive, 0.147, divided by do, which is positive, that's eight, comes out to 0 0.018, so positive 0 0.018. And remember, there's no units on magnification. That's just our final answer right there. So what type of image is this? Positive magnification means that it's upright. Magnification absolute value less than one between zero and one means that it's a shrunken image, which that makes sense if you've ever been in a convenience store and looked up at the little spherical ball, it makes things smaller or the mirror on the side of a truck makes things smaller. That makes sense, right? That's checking out. Um, so it is a uh, upright, and shrunken image, okay? And if you wanted to check anything else about it and double check that your answer's right, of course, you can always go back and just reference this little table right here, make sure everything matches up. I guarantee you it will, okay? But instead of going through that, let's jump to another one. Here's a problem. Problem instead of example means it's your turn to try, okay? So I want you to pause the video really quick. I want you to try this one on your own, be obsessed with your sign conventions, hit the play button when you're ready to see my solution. Hey, before we go further, I just wanted to mention that what you're watching right now is a topic review from crambetter.com. If you go to our website, you'll find more of these, plus study guides and sets of practice exam questions for every topic in your course. Make sure you check it out. But now, let's get back to it. All right, let's do it together. So we're staring at a massive zit. We're holding our compact makeup mirror 25 centimeters from our face. Of course, I do this all the time. Uh, images right side up but we could swear the zit looks twice its actual size. Calculate the focal length of our mirror. All right, cool. So here's what I'm seeing. Our mirror is 25 centimeters from our face. The face is the object, right? So that's an object distance. DO, always positive, 0 0.25 meters in standard units. Next up, zit looks twice its size. It's also right side up. That means the magnification is two, because it's twice the size. Right side up means guaranteed, positive magnifications and upright magnification. Okay, upright image. So here we go. Uh, what's gonna happen? Uh, magnification can also be written as minus di over do, right? We know magnification in do, we can solve for di if we want to. That'll probably help us along our little journey here. So di is equal to minus mdo. Plug that all in, di turns out to be negative 0 0.5 meters. Good to know. Okay, fair enough. So uh, what else do we know about this thing? Well, we're trying to figure out the focal length of our mirror. I'm probably gonna use the lens maker's equation, the one over focal length formula. One over focal length is one over DO plus one over DI. We're gonna solve that for focal length. So invert everything, raise it to the negative one power, one over DO plus one over DI, all to the negative one power. It's gonna give us F equal to positive 0.5 meters. Hey, we calculated the focal length of our mirror. Good to go. If you double check this, right, check that table, all right, you're going to find DO is less than absolute value of F, right, because DO is 0.25 meters. The focal length is this right here. So DO is less than F. That's true. If you look that up in your little table here, DO less than F, it's supposed to be virtual, upright, and large. Uh, let's see if that's really true. Virtual, upright, and large. Well, is it virtual? Okay, how would we tell whether it's virtual or not? Well, if your image distance is negative, you have a virtual image. Is that true? Image distance is negative, virtual image, good to go. All right, next thing we're supposed to see is that it is upright. Is that true or is that not true? Magnification is positive, therefore it's upright that we're good to go. Magnification positive means upright. You might also sometimes see that as erect. That's fun to say. It's erect or upright, good to know. The other thing it's supposed to be is enlarged. Ooh, erect and enlarged, just how we like them. Uh, enlarged, how do we tell? If your magnification's absolute value is greater than one, 
it's growing. It's getting bigger, right? And the zit is twice the size. So that, of course, makes sense. So, yeah, this baby is erect and enlarged. We're in luck. Sounds great. Hope you had fun. If you want to pass your math and science classes the easy way, head to crambetter.com. We've got study guides, practice exam questions, and shorter, easier explanations of every topic in your class. Click the link in the video description, and I'll see you there.